Thank you, Missy. You can start the slides. Uh, over the last 10 years, I've spent some time in Afghanistan, and my wife says, what did you do over there tonight? I'm going to answer that question. She's, she was not sure, and neither is my daughter. Uh, Afghanistan, a land of many contrasts, a land of great agriculture. Uh, I was asked to go there in 2005, starting my, uh, my journeys there, uh, to work in agriculture. And I said, well, what do we do in agriculture there? Uh, oh, well, let's work on pistachios. Uh, they said, fine, that's good. That's one of the only crops in Afghanistan that can compete with poppies. <laughs> and here we have a picture of pistachios. All the pistachios you've ever eaten have come from Afghanistan in one way or another. They were all cloned from a plant brought to the United States a long time ago. Well, when you're, what do you do with pistachios? Well, I didn't know where they were. So when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So therefore, since I'm a geographer, I made a map. That took, we flew around in airplanes, uh, ran around in armored vehicles, walked the landscape, and generally had a pretty good time. And finally, uh, discovered that no one knows where the pistachios are. All the maps were blown up in the wars. So. I made a nice map, and I would appreciate everybody uh, appreciating that map. <laughs> no, thanks. Well, I made the map. It took a month. And I said, well, what do we do now? And they said, well, you go home. And that was the end. <laughs> or so I thought. Six months later, uh, one of the people called me back and says, why don't you come back and tell us what to do about the pistachios? Well, this got a little weirder because then I had to start wearing a bulletproof vest. Things were not quite as easy as they were before, but let's work with some people to try to solve the pistachio problem. And that problem was, it was a big one. We worked with uh, individuals, I worked with uh, people who actually owned the land, worked with the farmers and ministers and all, and tried to come up with some kind of community plan in one place to help the pistachios. By the way, I started seeing things like this, evidence of other invaders. Uh, got me thinking, as well as got me thinking about this. This is a watershed restoration project which failed. The people stole the wood to burn for fires, and the uh, bad guys came and blew up the things. So the only things that lasted were the things I saw that were made just out of rocks. Those things lasted. Well, we flew around in airplanes again. And things got a little weirder. Uh, of the three Americans on this plane, only two came home. So things got a little more dicey over there. And then there was the incident, the jogging incident, which no one should go jog in Afghanistan, at least at night. Uh, I was jogging in Afghanistan around the compound, and I looked up, and there's fireworks. No, that wasn't fireworks. Somebody shot a rocket at me from the, uh, an abandoned building. And, of course, there's sirens going off, and they missed. But we made a map <laughs> and a plan and said, you guys do these things in this area. And that was the end. I left. But was it? No. <sighs> Two years later, I saw this publication. Uh, pistachio Woodlands Rehabilitation, the 2006 pistachio harvest, the villagers in this village estimated a 65% increase in revenue. That was the village I made a plan for. I said, well, you didn't tell me about that. Well, that's all right. I called up the fellow in Washington and said, let's go back and do something. He said, yes, well, let's have a conference. So in Kabul, they set up a conference. I made a nice map. But a week before I went, they blew up the hotel we were having the conference. Yeah, and then there was a little voice in the back of the room that said, you aren't going there anymore. That was from the wife. <laughs> I said, okay, I guess I'm not going in there anymore. So I gave up. That was the end. Oh, no. A few months later, a fellow called me up and says, let's build some dams. And I said, well, I can't go over there anymore. But he said, yeah, let's build some dams. You can stay right there. So we used satellites. We used special information. We used uh, lots of maps and designed 280 dams for Afghanistan. Yeah, not so good. Uh, bad guys blow them up. 
people steal the wire in the electrical buildings. Just didn't work. Rivers come by and roll them away. So that didn't work. So that was, <laughs> I thought that was the end. No. A year later, this guy calls me up. Says, I hear tell you can do some good stuff with satellites. And I said, well, I can't come over there. He said, then don't have to. We got secret squirrel stuff all over the place. This guy's mission and his, his group of National Guard was to do counterinsurgency. I said, well, I'm an agriculture guy. But he says, what can you do? I said, okay, this is what you can do. You build ditches. You build dams out of rocks. You clean canals. Number one, that does some good for farmers. Number two, that keeps them tired. And we pay them. Okay. So we built lots of dams. Oh, no, we didn't build dams. We built lots of these watershed projects, over 30 million bucks worth. No soldier had to go out in the field to do these projects. I did it all from my desk. And there was the incident of the forward operating base that every single Christmas would get rocketed all day long by the insurgents. After we built their projects, there was no more rockets. Now, who knows what I did in Afghanistan? Did I save a soldier? Did I help a farmer get water? I don't know those things. But I do know when we did leave Afghanistan, I left too. Uh, whether I, any of my projects are still there or not, I can't say. But maybe one soldier got home that wouldn't have otherwise. So that was truly the end.